an issue with the potential issue with the safety and the risk of the surface water. And we have a tritium detection that if you ask a question about it, you get officials running up to you telling you you're full of it. So, I don't know. My BS meter's going off heavy. Anybody else? Okay, so there's a lot more to talk about. You know, this is why I had a hard week. I, I, I feel like I got ambushed. I went to a scientific meeting and I got ambushed with a bunch of crap and I wasn't prepared for it. So, can, can since then I've taken a lot of data. Let me just wrap up very quickly. Since then I've, yeah, I've, I've gone to Joni's. She's, as I say, some people, you know, I'm a latecomer to this. I just came in late and smelled something funny. But there's a lot of people that have been looking at it for years. And first of all, I applaud all of you. And second of all, I don't know anyone who's worked on it more tirelessly than Joni. And I went and looked through. She has piles and stacks of information on this. She's been following this forever. And filing legal briefs in court, you know, a lot of this stuff went to court. A lot of people knew about this problem long ago. When I find somebody saying something I'm saying now, and they were saying it two years ago or five years ago, i got to really take off my hat to that person. So um, what I'm going to ask maybe is that we pass, you know, we're going to talk about what we're going to do about this. And the first thing we're going to do is uncover what the hell's going on and get to the bottom of it. We're going to get a proper risk analysis. And we're going to get a monitoring system set up that citizens are involved with, you know? Okay, so there's a petition to that effect that Joni has. I'm going to ask that we pass the basket one more time. And because that effort is taking place on a shoestring, this is all of your water supply, and I think we're in trouble. So that's what I want to say. If you want to applaud, I would like for you to turn to Joni right now and give her a round of applause. Thank you very much. Anyone learn anything this morning? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was scolding you, did I? <laughs> I do want to give Mark a hand, too. I'm going to try to help him out with questions. And if, Tony, would you like to add quickly, do you want to add anything to that? Um, as, as first off, your, your mind. I would invite you to attend the toxic tour yeah. so that you can see for yourself what's going on. It's got such a catchy on. name. I know. And, <laughs> and um, Where do we sign up? there's a, a legal pad going around to sign up. Um, and I would invite you to attend the Buckman board meeting on t Thursday at 4 o'clock at City Hall. Um, could you describe the toxic tour a little bit? The toxic tour will begin at up at Los Alamos National Laboratory. We'll go up and look at some of the stormwater monitoring or the stormwater systems that the Los Alamos County has where water just runs off of large, large parking lots into the canyons, thereby mobilizing contaminants, dump sites um, in the canyons and in the bottoms of the canyons. Um, We'll go up to the ski basin so that you can see the depth and the length and the um, devastation of the, of the Cerro Grande fire and the Los Conchas fire and what we can expect this spring if we get a lot of snow through that canyon carrying contaminants down to the Rio Grande. Um, we'll go around to White Rock We'll, we'll look at what happened in Water Canyon from the Los Conchas fire, the amount of devastation that's happened in that area that's carrying contamination from the high explosive sites down to the Rio Grande. We'll go around to White Rock Canyon or White Rock Overlook and we'll look at the Buckman. And then on the way back down, we'll stop at the Buckman Direct Diversion Project Early Warning System and um, look at the cameras and look at the telemetry and look at the, the neat little cement structure that they have for measuring the amount of flow going through that will alert everybody that um, flows are up above five cubic feet per second and that they should maybe consider turning off the Buckman. And then we'll come around and we'll, we'll um, look at the Buckman. 
Um, and we'll look at the wells that are right by the river. We'll look at, we'll stand on the diversion site. Um, we'll talk about the park plutonium, where um, people are suggesting that we, that renovation takes place. It's a beautiful area. It's a, it's a major uh, flyway for migratory birds. There's eagles, um, raptors out there. There's all sorts of wildlife. Um, but there's plutonium out there that was deposited in the 1950s, and it needs to be cleaned up while they're, before they do the actual restoration of the area. They're talking about putting in some toilets and putting in some pathways and walking trails, and it'll be really beautiful, but we have to call Lanel to the table to bring their expertise to clean up this plutonium that's in the area. Um, and then we'll come back to the, the DeVargas Mall. So. If any of you would like to schedule your own tour with your own friends or your own groups, please contact me, and I'd be happy to do that. What's the um, date of the toxic tour? Toxic tour, <coughs> February 11th, which is a Saturday. It's an all-day adventure. And then the adventure. next one starts at 9. Starts at 9. De Vargas by the Office Depot. Um, bring water, sunscreen. Bring the stuff to take care of yourself, because we're going to change the route. We'll stop at the Los Alamos Co-op. And you can get some lunch things, but we'll see how far we can get before, before that. Um, and the second one. And the second one is March third. March third. So we're trying to do it, uh, do the toxic tour on the first Saturday of the month, but it's an all-day adventure. Um, bring your notebooks, bring your cameras, document for yourself, <laughs> share this info, and plan to share this information with others. Um, is that enough? Thanks, John. That's enough. Thank you. Any questions on the front row? Paul, um, do you want to use well, this? No, well, first I will speak out. Andrew, take the microphone. Yeah, because there's a lot of people here. That'd be great. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to, before you had finished, I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about your meeting with Rick Carpenter, which you had mentioned. But um, I also want to uh, mention that the, in the um, in the northern part of the county, uh, there's a... Uh, a river diversion for the Amat water settlement. And uh, with all of the knowledge and information that you have, I think this would be a good time to uh, introduce some of the concerns that, that you know, have, you've, you've addressed after uh, the fact. Mm -hmm. And it would be good to address these issues before um, the, you know, the studies are done and the environmental studies are done. And I think um, I don't know how many, you mentioned some of the canyons actually drain in uh, up above, um, so I don't know how many of those canyons actually might affect, uh, but there's plenty of other uh, contaminants in the Rio Grande River that, that will be uh, diverted at, and it's, it's, a, it's another very, very expensive diversion. It's going to cost a lot of money, and uh, the county is again in, involved in this. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Um, with regard to where the diversions go in the river, we have to look at the hydrology and the maps. Joni actually has a better idea than I do, so let's do that. I want to caution you, anybody who's looking at that, you know, the main reason they said here they weren't looking at the toxic plumes, they were looking at the steady state condition of the river, is because we're looking at long-term effects. And they keep pointing out in all these reports, you know, most of the time the Rio Grande is clean. To which I like to say, you know, most of the time it's safe to stand on a railroad track. <laughs> You know, it doesn't mean it's without risk, you know, that it's clean sometimes. If you really want to know whether it's clean, you don't look at the steady state condition of these canyons or, or, the, uh, or the river. You look at the transient condition. You look particularly at the bubble. Um, as far as my meeting with Rick Carpenter, as I said, when I went to this meeting, uh, there were two officials there, and Rick Carpenter was dialed onto the speakerphone and was there and available during this meeting while I was being told that uh, the tritium situation was just a round-off error in the spreadsheet. Okay. So he just happened to be there for it. And then he again told me that the risk engineering, that the reliability engineering had been done, and I'm, I, I will come before you and eat crow when I see that analysis. But I don't think I'm going to have to.